I'm Scott Allen Motors, the 28th of March, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life, Leon, Nicaragua, which you can't tell because I'm recording in my office today. We're gonna go into that after the bump. We're back. I'm filming in the office today. Decided I just wanted to do something different. I had a chance to get some recording done. I got this all set up and I had a beautiful window full of natural light that was coming and it's gotten dark by the time I managed to actually start recording. So that's ridiculous waste of effort. I'm hoping that this turns out well anyway. Uh, thanks to the uh, lighting, I actually have my uh, studio light on, but I have no decoration behind me. It's incredibly echoey and so I'm hoping, hoping that this turns out pretty good. All right, on today's show, uh, I want to talk about, and this is weird because we, we talked, it's totally not the kind of thing I normally do, but uh, a few days ago we did the episode on what do you call Americans, do you call them gringos, do you call them Americans, do you call them Estadunidense, United Statesians, how do you deal with the names are necessary. You have to be able to refer to what country someone is from. You have to be able to say where things are, like you have to, right? It, it, some people say, well, we shouldn't have labels. No, that's not really the answer, right? Like that's... That sounds good, it's a nice sound bite. Oh, we shouldn't have labels, no one should be from anywhere, no one should be anything. But of course that doesn't make any sense. You need to know what passport someone carries. You have to know what law applies. You have to know what taxes apply. You have to know what their context is to understand them. So these things are really important. And it, and it led to some other discussions because we were talking about who and why were things called America at the time and talking about some of the history of why the United States of America is called that. This led to some discussion about uh, when America was named. And it's really interesting. So I want to take some time today and actually talk about this because I just, I, it's just a change of pace. And I'm, sometimes I'm looking for topics and this gives me a chance to work in the office and, and do this. So I think this is going, I hope this is going to be interesting and I can hear the echo in here and it's driving me nuts. Uh, I don't normally talk loudly and I don't normally have it closed off or on air conditioning uh, because they were doing work outside today. So. Um, I already had it cooled off, so I was able to, to record in here without all the distractions, but I need a lot of wall hangings and furniture and stuff added to this room and more lighting to be able to do this, I think. The camera does an amazing job. I'm on the Olympus EM-1 Mark II. With a, uh, we're set to F2 on the, on the 25 millimeter, so I mean, it's got some good light gathering capability, and I'm on the task cam for the audio, so hopefully this looks and sounds pretty decent. We're gonna have to do a lot of cleanup because of the echo and stuff. Once we get more lights and get things on the walls and get some furniture in here, uh, it, it'll be completely different. All right, so everyone learns that America is named after Amerigo Vespucci, 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 and uh, an Italian explorer, but he worked for Spain and Portugal. And while he didn't discover the New World, that's actually important because some people attribute that to him. Um, he was one of the early explorers. And so he gets a lot of credit for that um, because he is the first, we think, to really kind of be like, this is a separate continent. Um, so that's important, right? So it's not that he's not an important guy, but he's an odd choice. And he's an odd enough choice that he's one of the, 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 the his pick as a name is one of the reasons that the name of the Americas was disputed for a really long time. So a couple, a, a couple, there's a bunch of foundational things here that are really interesting. First, America isn't a place. In non-English uh, speaking languages, often America is used to refer to all of the Americas. In English, it is not. It is the Americas refers to all of the Americas. America refers to the United States of. And, and people can be as upset about that as they want. This is not an opinion piece. This is what the dictionary says, right? The English dictionary in English, it is the Americas and America. If you want to refer to North America, that's North America, South America, South America. There is no singular America, right? That there are a bunch of places that have America in the name and together they are the Americas. Traditionally, they were called the New World, right? They were first called the New World, the uh, uh, Terra Incognito, uh, uh, Terra Nuevo, and eventually a lot of places started calling them America or something America. Uh, but if you want to refer to all of the Americas as a single continent, for example, you would call it the continent of America. Wikipedia actually says this, 
right? It's not just a dictionary piece. This is not just my interpretation of the obvious dictionary components, but Wikipedia says the form is generally the continent of America if you want to refer to the non-agreed upon singular continent terminology. Because in the English speaking world, North America and South America are considered separate continents. And so there is no America, like the concept of a singular America only exists in the context of the United States of. Um, hence some of the massive confusion over how it is used. Um, and I'm not saying that I agree with the name being the United States of America. I'm just saying this is how English uses the words. So when you, when you say, oh, you can't use America this way or you can or whatever, you're often um, either misusing the word as it has existed in the language for hundreds of years or misusing another language, right? Many people, especially on a channel like this, a lot of us speak Spanish. There's quite a few that speak French, some speak German. And in all those languages, they use America to mean something different. This is, is a situation where the languages have a name or, or word that seems the same, but actually has different meaning, even though it's kind of the same word. That happens sometimes. This is a situation where it's a little bit harder to catch it. So it's important to understand that, yes, America as used in Spanish means the entire Americas in English. So if you write America, I am going to America in Spanish, translates to I'm going to the Americas in English. I'm going to the United States. I'm going to uh, the Estados Unidos in Spanish translates to I'm going to the United States of America or I'm going to America in English, right? So that's important. In, in Spanish, it's Los Estados Unidos, not America. So there's all of the words are different. <clears throat> so you have different things you have to work out. The languages just change, right? Words change between languages. So that's, that's just necessary to understand. Um, so I'm just gonna read this real quickly, right out of Wikipedia, right? Cause I don't want, don't write and be upset because I'm injecting an opinion. I'm just filling in what Wikipedia says because people were saying, picking, they were cherry picking stuff from this to say, well, America was named after Amerigo Vespucci. He did all this great stuff and therefore everything's named. And it's not that simple. None of that is agreed on. Okay. In modern English, North and South America are generally considered separate continents and taken together are called the Americas in the plural, parallel to similar situations as the Carolinas and the Dakotas. We never refer to Dakota or Carolina in the United States as examples. When conceived as a unitary continent, the form is generally the continent of America in the singular. However, without a clarifying context, singular America in English commonly refers to the United States of America. Okay, so that's important and that's what I said. Now, some history, because one of the things we talked about is that when a lot of the colonial stuff was happening, the concept of being in America didn't exist. We apply that to them now, but it did not exist at the time, and here's why. The earliest known use of the name America dates to April 25th, 1507. So we're just coming up on uh, uh, 516 years of, of this being in, in, from the first time it was written down when it was applied to what is now known as South America. So this is the first thing that's important. All the places we were discussing in the online conversations about this were in North America or Central America, which is generally considered North America, at least by Americans. South America is when you use terms like America in a colonial sense, even North Americans tend to think of South America because it's much more strongly associated down there. So this is important. In 1507, South America was called America not North America. That came sometime later. It appears on a small globe with uh, 12 time zones together with a large wall mount uh, from cartographer Von Simmuller uh, in France. Um, one of the people who's believed to be his collaborator defended this. And this is interesting. He said, I do not see why right anyone would have, uh, let me say it again, I do not see what right anyone would have to object to calling this part, that is the South American mainland, only defending South America, after Americus, who discovered it and who is a man of intelligence, Amerigen, that is the land of Americus or America, since both Europa and Asia got their names from women. So he's making a point that he thought it should be named after a man 
because other places weren't. Okay, so diverging from the rules. This is actually telling because there's more to this. Uh, it turns out that the, the cartographer who did this, uh, Waldsi Müller, he actually recanted naming it this. He never named the portion, the place that became the United States of, or anything like Nicaragua. None of this was called America by him. Only South America and only once in 1507. After that, he was a cartographer for a very long time. Every map he ever made after that referred to it as the New World or Terra Incognito, not as America. So he reversed that in his maps. So yes, he was first, but he was also like, mate, no one agreed to it, right? That's very important that even he didn't see it as America very quickly after he did this. And this defense of it in this book is important because there's other problems, such as you don't name continents after men. That was not something you did in, um, in Europe at the time. They were normally named after and by monarchs. So he was not a person who would be accepted to be able to name a continent. A cartographer is not a viable source for the name of a continent. Um, continents are expected to be named after Greek goddesses. That is just history. Asia is named after one. Europa is the mother of Zeus and so forth. Um, Africa was named by the Romans. Uh, and, and I don't know at what that comes from. Um, maybe not a Greek god, but all of these things, there, there's, a, there's a, a trend and America doesn't follow it. So it looks like Ringman, who is the, the author of the book defending this, was actually trying to come up with excuses after the fact to justify why it was called America. Because it didn't make sense. Because at the time, this would not have been considered valid at all. No one would have been okay with it being called America on this basis. So something is fundamentally wrong. You don't name things after explorers. You don't get named by cartographers. So, so not agreed upon, and even the cartographer backed off. So it seems like he's trying to uh, uh, cl clarify and defend him. Uh, in 1913, uh, after Ringman, who had done the defense, had died, uh, Waldsee Müller then called it terra incognita, uh, with a note that Columbus had discovered it. This is also important because Spain never accepted, almost, well, now they do, but for hundreds of years did not accept it being called America because they said if it was going to be named after an explorer, it must be Columbus. Hence my earlier mention of all of this region being Colombia as well as America, those are both names that apply to the entire region, Colombia being more applicable to North America, which Columbus did discover, uh, and Vespucci more connected to South America. It's also strange that it be named after his first name, not his last name, and that it was feminized uh, if they were making a point about being a man. None of it holds up, right? It's, it's actually a really loose story as to why it is named that way. And I know in school, they want simple, concise answers without dispute. And so we're taught that Amerigo Vespucci was this important explorer and it was named after him and end of story. It turns out that's not the end of story. It's barely the beginning. Uh, so Spain never recognized this. And remember, nearly all of the New World was Spanish. The majority of it that was not Spanish was Portuguese. And so those regions not calling it America was a pretty big deal. The people who were calling it America were apparently just a fringe group for a really long time. 1534 is the first time that North America ever had it uh, applied to them. And Mercator uh, put it onto a map in 1538, but even then it was America or New India. It was, no, it was still not solidly America by 1538. And you have to remember, many of the colonies were well established long before then, or decently well before then. Nicaragua, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, what then was Mexico, but is now the United States, Florida, um, um, Puerto Rico, Cuba, uh, the Dominican Republic, all of those were established colonies in North America, not in America, not in the Americas, not in any place being called America for 40 years before 
the first known use of America in any sense to refer to the region they were in. So all of them are established colonies, not in America. That's just really interesting to think. None of them were thinking we're in America. We're going, no, that didn't exist. Now here's the other really interesting thing. Because of the it doesn't hold up stories and because of the way that some of the defenses of the name were written as if they didn't know why it was named America and they were trying to come up with excuses for it. In 1874, Thomas Belt published the indigenous name of the Amerisk Mountains in Nicaragua. They're pretty close to where I am here now. It's about a two hours drive away. Huigalpa and Boaco, which I hope to show you guys in some upcoming videos pretty soon, they sit in the Amerisk Mountains. There is a pretty compelling and widely accepted, and here in Nicaragua, it is simply believed to be the case, argument that the Americas are actually named after the Amorisk Mountains here for a number of reasons. Uh, one, it is uh, America or Amorisk, Amerik in Mayan language means a country of perpetually strong wind, the land of wind, or so forth, a spirit that breathes life itself. Uh, it is widely believed that Columbus, having encountered people here, right, Columbus landed in Nicaragua very early on when he came to the mainland, like he was on the islands first, but when he came to the mainland, Nicaragua was the first of, of many things, right, or very, very early on. Uh, he would have encountered, or his crews, uh, it was not, not him personally very likely, would have encountered people speaking of this mountain range very early on in the discovery process, long before the name America was applied, long before Amerigo Vespucci was sailing. Uh, and so, well, at least a few years before. And it is, it is believed that there was a, a decent chance that they were told that this area was referred to as something like America. And by the time that that information got back to Europe, people were using the word America. And then when it got applied to a map, the friend of the map maker feeling a need to defend a bizarre decision he thought to name it after Amerigo Vespucci, which doesn't make any sense contextually, name-wise, anything, that they had actually named it after a mountain range, but not knowing that there was that mountain range, not knowing the source of the name, thinking the only thing, and it actually says this somewhere in the Wikipedia, that it was the only reasonable at-hand explanation. And I'm going to read this from Stony Brook University. The baptismal passage in the Cosmographie Introductio has commonly been read as argument in which the author said that he was naming the newly discovered continent in honor of Vespucci and saw no reasons for objections. This is the one I read you earlier. But as etymology, uh, etymologist Joy Rea has suggested, it could also be read as an explanation. And it sounds more like an explanation than anything else, in which he indicates that he has heard the new world was called America and the only explanation lay in Vespucci's name. This actually holds a lot of water. This actually sounds reasonable, that they had heard the name America, didn't know the source of it, and were like, why shouldn't it be America? Stop trying to make everything a woman's name. Let this explorer have his day, right? But it wasn't that. Potentially, it was this other word, and it is actually a reference to the mountains in Nicaragua, uh, which are in pretty much the middle very, very close to the middle of, of the entire Americas. So a pretty good source as a name when you're trying to name a giant place that has no singular identity prior uh, to naming it. Uh, currently, the Vespucci explanation still is considered, uh, with, it still has primacy in Europe and the United States, but of course it also has hundreds of years of simply being taught to everyone and it's one of those things that people feel they can't question because it seems crazy uh, because we're all taught it as fact. But historians simply don't see it that way. And there has been a lot of uh, potential questions around that. And um, so historically, when looking at uh, this name, right, for hundreds of years, the majority of the people who were here in the Americas, right, the Spanish colonies, probably the Portuguese colonies. Um, when they first got here, they had no idea anyone called it America. For hundreds of years, they were here and established empires, right? Major cities that are still here, the countries that are here today, many colonies, huge amounts of history, huge parts of really important 
hundreds of years of history, so much more history in the colonial era than there's in the post-colonial era, right? And of course, even more in the pre-Columbian era, but we don't know that history very well. But of the European conquest, most of the time is still colonial. We still have like a hundred plus years to go until the post-colonial period is the greater amount of time than the pre-colonial. So we're talking about a region who did not identify and still has not identified as America in any way for the majority of its time. And in the post-colonial time, once there has been identities of these places, uh, a lot of them don't consider themselves America. A lot of South America doesn't think of them in terms of, of being America. A lot of Central America doesn't. North America tends to, but mostly only those in the United States, but they're the majority of North America. Now, all that said, we were saying, why did the United States call itself the United States of America? Well, we can blame all these different people, and they, when they first got here, yes, America was starting to be in use, blah, blah. So here's what's interesting. The 13 colonies were called the United Colonies, not the United Colonies of America. Even when they declared independence from England, they did not name themselves of America. That was a later change. It was not until September 15th, I believe, 1776, that Congress, the, Con the Second Continental Congress, again, a weird name, the Continental Congress, what continent were they the Congress of? Right, so there's already quite a bit of pretension here in this particular group, separate from the history, right? England didn't think of it as America. The Spanish didn't think of it as America. The French didn't think of it as America, I don't think. It was very much not America. And then this group of colonies, the United Colonies, as they knew each other for quite some time, then became something new. They started saying, we're gonna be states, and they, they, they created this Continental Congress, right? As if they represented the entire continent. And which continent was that? North America? The Americas? We don't really know, but definitely from later behavior, the Manifest Destiny, Monroe Doctrine. This is a group of, of people founding a new country who had a lot of hubris and were having visions of grandeur where they would take over the entire landmass as a single united entity. And th this was just the beginning of the takeover. Right, so that was, that was a lot of the thought process in the naming. So that when they switched from United Colonies and had their Continental Congress, the new name that they chose was to name themselves states instead of colonies and to become the United, the United States of America. The of America was added after Declaration of Independence, after the colonies had been united for years, after the war had been going on, after they had declared independence all these things then they said what should we call ourselves i don't like what we, we colonies we want to get away from that states yes we're, we're states because some of them aren't going to be colonies really quickly and the word the united colonies wouldn't have made sense anyway right after that and some of them were already starting to think of themselves as no longer colonies but as independent states so they were we're the united states and then this weird of america that they tacked on why did they tack that on? I don't know, but that's where it came from. That's when it came from. And I think that's really interesting. So all of this, I think, is really interesting that actually the case for Amerigo Vespucci is weak. The idea that the uh, map from 1507 named everything, yeah, it's the first one, but it was recanted and it went away. It took a long time. And it was only South America. North America was later. That the Americas themselves referred to themselves as the Americas took hundreds of years and highly disputed and all kinds of things are not, um, not the way that people imagine it. The, the history, the view of history we have is so much of pushing this American thing all the way back to 1507. That is not the way it was. And then the United States adding this name hundreds of years later still. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Get down in the comments. Let's talk about this. I want to know your opinions, what you found to do some discovery and research on your own. It's an interesting topic and I wanted to do something different today. So what do you think of this as a kind of a format and the whole filming thing? And yes, I can hopefully improve this. Definitely more lights and maybe during the day when there's light. And uh, uh, if you'd like to support the channel, I'm going to pop up a link, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me. It's like Patreon and it does a tremendous amount to help afford all the equipment we need to do this show. It's a lot to get this out every day. It takes a lot of work to do this. So I really appreciate everyone who helps make that possible. And of course, share this online, tell people about the show. 
and I will see all of you tomorrow.